Well, I want to welcome you to part seven of the power of fasting and prayer. And in this segment, I am talking about the example that we have for fasting and prayer. And I think our best example is Jesus. Well, he should always be the best example. Now, there's a passage of scripture that talks about this. It's Jesus going into the wilderness. And it's found in the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, chapter number four. And here we see the whole story of Jesus going into the wilderness where he's in temptation and he's fasting and he overcomes Satan. But I want to draw your attention to something very unique that you might miss if you're just doing a quick reading of it. Now, in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, it says this, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, that's important, returned from the Jordan and was led into the Spirit, into the desert by the Spirit, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during these days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. Okay, note that Jesus became hungry, not thirsty. After a period of time, if, you, if you're into an extended fast, or drinking only water, which was what Jesus did, uh, in this particular case, if you were to get hungry, that's the signal that you must eat. And it's, it's time to eat again because your, uh, your appetite goes away. Your hunger actually goes away if you're doing an only water fast. And that'll happen after a few days. But Jesus wasn't thirsty, but he was hungry. So Jesus had fasted 40 days drinking only water. And he went into this time of fasting, though, with a very unique anointing. And he went into the fasting period full of the Holy Spirit. Say, okay, well, that's Jesus. He's full of the Holy Spirit. That's a good thing. Yes, actually, he had just been filled with the Holy Spirit uh, earlier, but and the Holy Spirit is a good thing. I, I preach it. I believe in it. I encourage you to enter into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But there's an interesting verse about Jesus after his fast. If you look down in verse 14 of Luke chapter number four, you'll see this. It says, Jesus returned to Galilee. That's when he's leaving the, the wilderness. He returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. So Jesus came out of the fast in the power of the Holy Spirit. See, he, at the end of his fast, he defeated Satan, and he was now beginning to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a difference between operating in the fullness of the Holy Spirit and operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Something transformed Jesus from not just being a spirit-filled man into a man who operated and functioned in the power of the Holy Spirit, which is what he needed to accomplish his ministry. Because we know that when Jesus was on earth, he did not exercise his own divine power to do anything. He used the power of the Holy Spirit that was in him. And so the fullness of the Holy Spirit was before the fasting experience, but the power was afterwards. And I think we need to make the secret of Jesus' power the secret of our power. After all, Jesus is our example. He is our ultimate model. So fasting releases the power of the Holy Spirit into our lives. It facilitates this free flow of the Holy Spirit going through you, and it dissolves and it removes junk in your life. I tell you, the, the best way for me to put my soul in its place, and my soul is it's my mind, my will, and my emotions, but to get it in its right place is to do it through fasting and prayer so that I can walk in spiritual alignment. So our example of Jesus teaches us that fasting helps release the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Well, I hope you'll join me for the final segment, part number eight, about the power of fasting and prayer, and that you will put these principles into operation in your life because fasting and prayer works wonders in your spiritual life.